Well, you know, there's two things that are happening right now. On this side of me is Roy Squad. This is where the encampment has been for the last week, and you can see it's kind of cleared out. Law enforcement in the early morning hours started moving through here, started detaining people. We've been watching as they kind of take groups of students out, search them, zip tie them, and then lead them away. So that process is still going on. It has been pretty peaceful. It does not look like the people that are here were um, uh, were res resisting at all. It looks like they were kind of going away willingly. They knew that it was going to be just a matter of time before they were told that they were part of an unlawful gathering and they had to leave. What we're seeing on the other side, though, is this is the Jan Steps, and it looks like there is a group of protesters that has now come. They've kind of, um, they're behind barricades, so it's hard to see exactly how big this group is, but they're waving flags, they're chanting, and they are now trying to pick up the message that we have been hearing from the encampment. Free Palestine, divest from, from companies that do business with Israel. They uh, now seem to have the same message that we we were hearing from those in the encampment. It's hard to tell exactly um, the group of people that has gathered here, how many of them are students, how many of them are from the outside and just wanted to kind of join in on this movement. But it looks like when these people heard that the actual encampment was going to be cleared, was going to be broken up, that they took it upon themselves to kind of come and, and bring more people and get this message out even more. Right now, law enforcement has just set up barriers. They're just kind of standing and watching. We haven't seen any confrontations in this area, but you can see kind of the large law enforcement presence keeping an eye on this crowd while law enforcement on the other side of where we are continues to detain people and clear out the encampment. Um, a, a big presence here with kind of two groups doing kind of two different jobs. Okay, Tina, thank you. We want to check in now with Rick Montanez, who is also there at UCLA. So Rick, what are you seeing from your perspective? Good morning. You know, right now we are across the way from where Tina is. She is back beyond the crowd there. But what we want to show you is off in the distance. This is where they're bringing the people who are detained uh, in zip ties and then lining them all up. And you could see if uh, my photographer Joe Ruiz can follow the line here. And you see it goes all the way across the quad. And then there are uh, buses over here where it seems like they will be processing all of the people who have been arrested overnight. Uh, what we're noticing too is, you know, we talked about this large presence of law enforcement well there is an officer with each person standing in this line so uh, quite a bit of, uh, of law enforcement presence that we're seeing right in front of us here uh, we're seeing a lot of people coming out I was counting uh, trying to count the number of people who are detained here and I got up to about 60 and then lost count and then I saw the line basically double because it went all the way around uh, these uh, monitors that are set up out here but just now we're still hearing uh, what sounds like flashbangs. We're also seeing people placed on the steps. And then there's a couple of sheriff's department uh, inmate buses that are out here. So likely to see people put on those buses to be taken, uh, whether they process them here, where they document their names, get IDs, all of that, uh, and then take them away. And the other thing I want to talk about this morning is uh, I've been hearing from our crews who have been here, Tina and Cara, that, uh, you know, we look at who is detained and it's difficult to tell exactly who is a student, who is not, especially based on uh, the ages that they appear to be. But one of the things that I noticed when I was here on Thursday when this encampment started, I was our, our, one of our first KCAL crews out here that morning, and I talked with someone who was one of the leaders, if you will, of these uh, protesters who said she was a graduate student. Um, so you've got to imagine, of course, this runs the uh, range of ages for people who are out here participating, whether in the encampment or just here to support them on the outside of the encampment because remember, of course, they had it all barricaded off and we're seeing a lot of that uh, still out. And I'm gonna ask Joe here, if we can swing around one more time to show us toward the quad so you can see kind of what Tina was talking about this morning where there is a lot of uh, mess that is left behind because of uh, where they are taking down some of the tents, some of those barricades. Uh, we saw them bring in plywood and pellets, wood pellets to build up that barricade. But what we're seeing right now essentially is just this is where they're bringing them. They're taking the people who are detained, the people in zip ties and getting ready to load them up on buses. We have not been able to talk with any of them. Again, law enforcement is with each and every person that has been arrested, it appears anyway, or detained. And so uh, we can't get close to them. They're, they're keeping us away. Uh, but we're just seeing a lot of that happening and still seeing them bring more people out from a Royce Quad where, again, Tina is just on the other side describing what happened
happened over there, but uh, this is where it appears they are taking those arrested protesters and likely taking them off to be booked. Rick, thank you. We want to bring in now in the studio Professor Sandy Tolan. He is a professor of journalism at USC. Uh, you had originally come in to talk about uh, the USC protests, Absolutely. but we're seeing what's un un unfolding right now on the UCLA campus. Of course, you're familiar with the UC system. You were a longtime professor at UC Berkeley. Right. Um, so what are you making of what's happening right now? Well, you know, I'm reading and seeing in real time as you, as you all are, mm -hmm. uh, but from what I'm reading in the LA Times, you know, the, the, according to this morning's report, uh, the pro-Palestinian peaceful protesters were attacked by a mob last night. So there has been violence brought upon them, and then the police come in after that. So, it, you know, it, it's almost as though the violence by the other side, whoever it was bringing the violence upon the Palestinian, pro-Palestinian protesters, um, were, you know, th that was reinforced by uh, and, and awarded. So it, it's, I know there are a lot of UCLA professors who are very concerned about police violence, as many of us at USC have been. So, you know, we're in the fog of protests and the fog of this militarized operation, but it doesn't look like th this was justified to bring in militarized force against peaceful protesters. Yes. That's certainly what we were seeing at USC. And there were hundreds of faculty members who were protesting that yesterday afternoon at uh, USC. And it's interesting you said that because we spoke with a protester earlier this morning who was saying they believe this is an overreaction. And this is kind of, you agree with that? I do, I do totally. Uh, I think there is an opportunity at USC and at UCLA and at other schools across the country, whether it's Columbia or Emory or others, to sit down and actually talk to people about what their concerns are. Um, you know, it's easy to forget what people are protesting. There are almost 35,000 people dead, including more than 14,000 children. M more than a million people have been displaced in Gaza. Uh, you're talking about uh, an operation that is one of the most intensive bombing campaigns in military history. So this is what people are trying to point to. So uh, if people would actually sit and listen rather than react with uh, a different kind of uh, police force, uh, I think we'd be in a much better place. So what we've seen this morning has been very peaceful from what we've been seeing from our cameras. Uh, the police kind of formed a line. They moved in slowly. We haven't seen any assaults or violence that I'm aware of this morning. Um, very different scene from earlier in the week, what we've been mentioning with the pro-Palestinian camp uh, and the, the confrontations happening there and the violence. Um, but given what happened earlier on in the week, you know, how do you handle that if you're the administration of UCLA? I mean, look, I don't envy the, the job of any college administrator right now with, with this going on over 120 campuses. But I think listening uh, and, and trying to understand there are some universities, some colleges that have af actually sat and listened. At my university, um, there, is, have, there have been pronouncements and uh, the president of USC, uh, Carol Fold, is doubling down and used the word felony, uh, you know, in, in reference to possible consequences for the 93 people who were arrested last week at USC. Um, I think face-to-face -face meetings um, and a genuine attempt within an atmosphere of a university of understanding, of an attempt at enlightenment and, and an attempt to understand where these protests are coming from uh, is far better than asking the police to come in. And it's good, I mean, again, we're seeing this all in real time, it's good to, uh, if it's accurate that the police at UCLA are not being violent, but it's a it's a riot police force, mm -hmm. and and I don't think that's the answer to peaceful protesters. And what you're seeing live on your screen right now is that line that Rick Montanez was referring to of people who've been detained now. They have zip ties on. They've been lining up. Uh, Rick said that he counted about 60 folks and then kind of lost count. That has almost doubled since then. So we're looking at definitely more than 100 arrests this morning, well over that um, as people are lined up there. And you, you, you made a great point that people often forget why this is even an issue in the first place and what is happening. Talk about what you've heard the students want, because most of them on all these campuses kind of want the same thing, a ceasefire and 
and investment from companies that deal with Israel. Break down what that means for us. Well, you know, again, it's, it's important to recognize what is actually happening on the ground. Obviously, the, the October 7th ta attacks were horrific, but so have been the attacks on Gaza. Imagine that, you know, you are looking for people who, militants who have attacked your country or your city. Would the response be to kill 34,000 people, th almost 35,000 people? That's almost the population of Culver City. And most of those people are civilians. 70% of them are women and children. So that's part of what they're focusing on. And they're looking at questions of divestment, yeah. And why is there not a discussion about that? During the protests against South Africa, against apartheid, um, that, was a, that was on the table, uh, ultimately. Um, the question of, of investments of college camp, on college campuses in, among universities of a divestment against uh, of, of companies that were doing business in South Africa. I think it would be very helpful if at uh, USC and other universities, there was an openness to understand what's the relationship. The, there are senior people in the USC administration that are, have very close ties to the Los Angeles Police Department, and the LAPD ha, uh, has close ties to doing training in Israel. I think opening that up and having a look at that and seeing what that means and how that fits in the demands in a kind of civil dialogue in the spirit of a university to understand and to seek knowledge and to not, as USC says in its own values, to, to not put uh, power over knowledge. And we should mention uh, when you talk about uh, the background of what's happening in the Middle East, you are the author of two books about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, you spend a lot of time there on the ground uh, reporting as well. So you have background not only working for the UC system, uh, you are also a current professor at USC where the protests are taking place and you have extensive knowledge of what's happening in the Middle East and the history and context there. So uh, we are taking a live look from two different, or we're taking a live look on your le left hand side of your screen at what's happening right now on the campus of UCLA and on the right hand side we're seeing what happened earlier as law enforcement moved in uh, before the sun had come up. All right well we want to get to John Beard now with KNX. Let's take a look at what he has. <laughs> setting off flashbang and moving toward these people. Yeah, this was obviously earlier this morning. You can see it was still dark outside, hearing lots of flashbangs. This was as law enforcement was arriving on campus and trying to push those protesters back. We've been following this for several hours now, and as you see, uh, those protesters being peacefully detained this morning. We do want to bring in our Mark Lou. We were looking, Mark, at earlier the line right now of those protesters with the zip ties being detained. Police officers seem to be standing next to them with these large brown paper bags. Do we know what that is? Uh, I don't know what the brown paper bags are, but they are asking for more resources where these protesters are being led to. Uh, I believe that the, the area that all the protesters that have been taken into custody is actually being, they're being led to the north to a hall called Bunch Hall. Okay, so this is a map of where this is all going down. This is the center of the UCLA campus here, and Royce Quad, where most of the action happened this morning, is right here. That's where the encampment was. It has now been cleared. Uh, Artina Patel was actually standing right about here. This is the top of the Jant steps where you saw her. There is actually now a police line formed right here, and there is a group of protesters also right here. Now, the residence halls are over in this direction. It's over to the west. And so if anybody is coming to approach this morning as the sun comes up, students are going to be approaching the Royce uh, Quad from this direction. And we've seen a line of protesters right here and another line of police. Now, earlier this morning, the police were staging in this area over to the east. This is to the east of the Royce Quad. 
Now, as they were arresting people in the Royce Quad, we could see from Rick Montanez's live shot they were being led this way, up the street, right here to this building. This is Bunch Hall. Now, I'm going to zoom in, clear out my drawings, and zoom in a little bit closer. This is actually an excellent place. I can see tactically why they chose this area. There is a large open area right here where they can protest. Uh, actually, they can gather the protesters, or it could be here in the sculpture garden. There's a large open area there where they can process anyone that has been zip tied and taken into custody. They can walk them to buses right here where Charles E. Young Drive goes this way. We have seen buses on this street with Cara Finstrom's live shot. The problem that I'm hearing right now is that a group of about 100 protesters is moving in this direction and there is now a line of CHP and sheriffs that is forming to barricade or block those protesters from approaching the protesters that are in custody right now. They are asking for more help. They say they have about 150 protesters in custody, either in this area or this area, and they need more officers there, not only to just protect them from the other people that are coming to form a line uh, there in, from the uh, westerly direction, but just to process more of these protesters that are there in this area. So they are asking to move resources up there, and we did see officers moving in that direction. So I'm going to keep monitoring this and let you know we are still, unfortunately, unable to get SkyCal overhead due to weather in the Westwood area. But uh, as soon as we can get them up, we will get a better look at what's going on over there. But in the meantime, it sounds like, though, things are progressing orderly and they are moving resources as they need in order to get uh, those protesters onto buses that are approaching from the east. Uh, Mark, talk about this police or this law enforcement response, I should say, because this is basically a task force. I mean, UCLA police uh, don't have the manpower to handle this by themselves. The LAPD was called in. This is also highway patrol. So this is a very different scenario than, for example, in New York at Columbia, where they have a big enough police force with the city to move everyone in. But this is actually highway patrol officers, a lot of them. Yeah, you know, this actually, I cannot remember a time where we've had such a large task force to take care of a single protest operation. As you mentioned, this is LAPD, this is a CHP, this is LA uh, County Sheriff's, this is also UC uh, PD, their own police force. We also saw elements from Santa Monica PD and Beverly Hills PD assisting down here in the Royce Quad area uh, this morning uh, because of how large of an operation this was. Now, these officers, all of these departments, they train for this. They have extensive training in dealing with protests that are both peaceful and unfortunately can sometimes turn violent. I was discussing a little bit earlier the reason why this took so long is because of the manpower needed to clear an encampment this size. Law enforcement does not want to approach protesters unless they have an overwhelming amount of manpower at their disposal. They don't want to have officers approach one protester and just one officer take one protester into custody. They form teams, they form arrest teams that can be as many as five, seven, even 10 officers to just take care of one protester at a time. This is for the safety of both the officer and the protester. In case there's any sort of tension or scuffling, there's an overwhelming amount of response there by law enforcement that's able to restrain that protester. And also in case other protesters try to intervene, that arrest team will be able to shield the protester being taken into custody and get them out of there back behind the skirmish line. So that requires sometimes as many as 10 times as many officers as there are protesters, which is why we're seeing such a large multi-agency task force to do this. But if it's done correctly, it's very safe and there's a very low likelihood of any fights breaking out because of that operation. Yeah, right there on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department bus where they're lining up the peaceful protesters who they have detained this morning. They have the zip ties. We've learned those brown bags we've been seeing them hold is what um, officials are putting their belongings in as they're being arrested. A lot of them had masks, goggles, helmets, all those things preparing, of course, to be out at this encampment. But of course, yesterday, um, this was ruled an all unlawful assembly. <clears throat> and so now we're watching them clear it out this morning. I want to go live now to Tina Patel, who is at the campus. Um, Tina, what are you seeing right now? We're seeing earlier pictures of protesters being led away in zip ties uh, right before the sun came out and this huge law enforcement response. 
Yeah, you know, and actually we've been talking about how UCLA a couple days ago said that this was an unlawful gathering here. Just a few minutes ago, they had another announcement over the loudspeaker telling people they had to leave this area. But from what we can tell, it has pretty much been cleared out. Throughout the morning, they were leading students away in zip ties, detaining them. There's a bus on the far end of Roy's Quad where they've been taking people as they've been detained. A lot of students, we had a chance to kind of yell some questions as they were being led away. And, and a few of them actually were smiling. They said, compared to what is happening in Gaza, what's happening in the Middle East, what they're going through is nothing. They felt like they had to stay here on principle to get their message out. But you can see pretty much the people that had been camped here now have been cleared out. Most of them detained. A few, I think, did walk away on their own. Now, on the other side of the quad, these are the Jan steps. And we have seen a big crowd now come. These are, we don't know if they're all students, if they're outsiders coming to show their support. But you can see that there's one there waving the Palestinian flag. There's a number of people that are here. They have bullhorns and the loudspeakers, and they're kind of doing chants, talking about free Palestine, getting that same message that we had been hearing from the encampment. Now, we don't know if these are some of the people that had been in the encampment earlier, if they left and they've now kind of created a new group, or if these are people that saw that the encampment was breaking up and decided to come and kind of pick up the cause. Right now, they're being peaceful. The, the police have set up a barricade on the top of the steps to keep them from coming into this area. And you can see the line of CHP that is just kind of here watching, keeping people from coming. But right now it has been peaceful, just kind of a lot of chanting, a lot of yelling, but no confrontations between police and the protesters. Again, it seems like most of the police force that we saw here earlier this morning was concentrated on clearing the encampment. Now that they kind of have done that, it feels like one side of campus that things have quieted down and now they're just kind of keeping watch on this side of campus. Okay, Tina, thank you. Uh, it is quite a scene out there right now, but uh, as we've been reporting all morning, it has been peaceful at least this morning. I want to bring back in Sandy Tolan, professor at USC. Um, what about these, you know, complaints from Jewish students saying they feel unsafe, that people are making anti-Semitic comments? Uh, mm -hmm. Free speech is one thing on the street, but when it's on a campus and you're trying to learn and they want a safe place to learn, they're paying tuition um, and they're, they're feeling intimidated. In some cases, they say that uh, anti-Semitic comments have been uh, hurled at them, that their physical paths have been blocked at times, and that you know, the, the administration needs to make a move to make them feel safe and to give them an environment in which they can learn. Yeah, I understand and I've heard a lot of that um, all across the country and obviously everyone who is at a college uh, or wherever they may be has a right to feel safe. Um, and I know that there have been some expressions of concern from Jewish students and where there is clear anti-Semitism, it should be absolutely denounced. Is that happening to the extent that people, some people are claiming? I don't know that it is, but where it's happening, it should be denounced. But it's, it's important to also note, like for example, at the USC protests, there are many Jewish students who are part of these protests. Mm -hmm. Jewish Voice for Peace. They were having seders last week at the pro-Palestinian camp. There was, uh, before the arrests were made uh, and the LAPD swooped in last week, one of the things, uh, uh, on the agenda, along with kite making and yoga, was a Kaddish reading. Mm. And so, th but that was broken up by the police who hauled everybody off, or 93 people off. So I, I think one of the things is everybody should feel safe, but we also have to note that many Palestinian, and Muslim, and other Arab uh, students also are feeling uh, unsafe, and few people are talking about their rights. So I think we have to look at everybody's rights, and we have to also understand that if something makes you uncomfortable, if somebody is saying, free Palestine, and that makes you uncomfortable and makes you feel unsafe, well, part of the idea of a university is for people to get out of their comfort zone, to have an exchange idea. If, if everybody is, is being protected so that no one feels comf uncomfortable, you know, where, do we, where is our education in that? So I think it's important to, to make a distinction between actual anti-Semitism, actual hate speech, and, uh, hate speech, and other uh, things that may just may be making f people feel uncomfortable but don't cross the line of free speech and free expression, which is the hallmark of a university. Yeah, you're saying a different opinion as opposed to hate speech. Yeah, I mean, if you want to take, for example, the, uh, the phrase that some people call anti-Semitic, I disagree that the phrase from the river to the sea 
is anti-Semitic. What it is referring to, in my understanding of having covered this region for 30 years and written two books and many, many articles, is it's an expression of people who want equality between Israelis and Palestinians on the same land. Right now, there isn't equality. There are different regimes of, of a control, but Israel is basically control of, in control of all the Holy Land, including the West Bank, where it's uh, you know controlled by by the Israeli military more than 60 percent. So people are expressing a desire for equality and and many of the people who are chanting from the river to the sea that's what they're talking about. A lot of uh, Jewish students might take issue with that and say that it's actually calling for the destruction of Israel. Right, right. You disagree with that? I disagree with that. I, I think w when you're looking at uh, you know, people are talking about a two-state solution. Right now, there is essentially in place one state with different regimes of rights. Uh, Palestinians in the West Bank are living in uh, amidst hundreds of checkpoints, military operations, attacks by settlers. We know what's happening in Gaza. So, if there, if the solution was a single state or a confederation, that would be a different uh, configuration than what exists now. Uh, and I know some people will find that a one-state solution is, is basically would not result in Israel being what it is now. But it doesn't, when you conflate that with uh, with with uh, attacks on Jews or extermination or getting people off the land, that's not to my understanding of what people are talking about. I think what has to happen is people need to realize that whatever happens, there should be equality between Israelis and Palestinians. And whether that's one person, one vote, or a confederation in which there's an Israel and a Palestine uh, existing across the land, like that is not, you know, we don't have room for that discussion now, but I think the idea that the, from the river to the sea is inherently anti-Semitic, I, I very much disagree with that. All right, we want to remind people we're looking at the screen right now. We have, of course, these are the protesters who have been detained this morning. They have zip ties on and that line has just been growing longer and longer. They are supposedly being loaded onto the sheriff's buses that are just in front of them. We've not actually seen any of those being detained put on the buses yet, but they've been lining them up um, and putting zip ties on protesters since the wee hours of the morning this morning. We want to bring in uh, the public information officer from the CHP who is assisting in this task force at UCLA, uh, Luis Cantero, who is on the campus right now. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's a busy morning. Uh, um, tell us about the operation today. What, from what we've been seeing, it's been largely peaceful. Um, yes, uh, we, we've been uh, seeing a little bit of everything. We've. Uh, we deployed our units uh, after being requested uh, from assistance from uh, the UCLA Police Department. Uh, we've managed to clear out most of the protesters. However, we're still here on scene on campus and uh, still dealing with a few uh, demonstrators at this time. And what is the plan for those who have been detained? So at this time, over uh, I don't have an exact number, but over 100 uh, demonstrators have been detained. Um, they will be uh, processed and booked. Uh, like you mentioned, we are, uh, they are being loaded up into a bus at this time where they will be uh, transported to a, a local uh, jail. So what, what exactly were you instructed to do as an agency when you got word that you would be moving onto the campus? So as soon as we received, uh, 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 we, we were requested for assistance, uh, we started deploying our units. Uh, we were we deployed our units uh, early uh, morning uh, yesterday, and uh, we've been uh, working uh, all day, all night, uh, trying to assist uh, UCLA P uh, Police Department with uh, removing the, uh, the demonstrators. And have you seen any violence? Have your officers encountered uh, any violence or, or pushback? We did. Uh, uh, er we're still actually re um, receiving some pushback. However, earlier today. Uh, we were uh, seeing uh, demonstrators that uh, get a little hostile, 
with our officers as soon as we showed up uh, they started getting a little rowdy um, we were encountering some um, objects being thrown at our officers however we were able to uh, manage and uh, get most of the demonstrators at this time out of the area and tactically, what is what is the operation? What is the strategy here? Because we we've just been seeing uh, on our screen what's happening from the cameras on the ground. We saw long lines of officers uh, kind of stepping in slowly and surrounding the encampment. Is that kind of the strategy that you're employing? Um, yes, that's, uh, that's exactly what we're doing at this time. We're uh, trying to get uh, uh, pushing the demonstrators back. We've uh, managed to dismantle the encampment where they were had their tents set up. Uh, we're still uh, receiving a little bit of uh, pushback. However, the goal is to try to get the campus completely cleared. And sure, we've been hearing flashbangs all morning. One of the tactics, of course, to try to get this all under control and uh, break up this encampment. We talked earlier about the LAPD and how they prep for situations like this where they're facing hundreds or maybe even a thousand protesters. What kind of training does CHP do to prepare for a situation like this? What are you telling officers as they go out and encounter these protesters? So the California Highway Patrol, uh, we're, uh, we're trained for incidents like these. Uh, in okay. this case, we went ahead and... Okay, and, uh, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, we are going to get to Cara Finstrom on the ground right now because it looks like things are getting a little chaotic. Cara, what are you seeing? Yeah, we just had a couple of very loud flash bangs, uh, and you can see one person is being detained. Uh, there was a scuffle here uh, between officers and some of these protesters. We just walked up uh, and heard the fla loud flash bang, so started moving in this direction uh, and, and kind of just walked upon this. Um, a number of officers here as well. Uh, you could see someone there on the ground. This lie. What what happened here? The Zionist gangs yesterday were torturing us for hours and they didn't show up. I called 911 twice and they didn't. They hang up on me. Today they show up to arrest students who are protesting in front of us. They start attacking the students who are peacefully protesting, running them down, and then push, hitting them with batons. Over there, they were holding guns at us on the, at night time. When the cameras show up, they're hiding the guns. And when, so right now, they're just creating chaos as we're protesting. We are hands up. So again, you're seeing some of the, some of the clashes, hearing some of the very loud flash bangs as uh, officers are clearing. Uh, this is a force with the CHP, the area here. And you can see some of these uh, protesters moving birds into the street, trying to create some obstruction uh, for the officers as they move out. Mm. Cara, are you seeing a There pep is a... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say... I was going to say there is a bus at the end of this uh, street. These officers clearing the uh, birds out of the street. I don't know. If, looks like they're moving the bus up now into the street. Uh, or maybe they're going to turn it around down there. So don't know if they actually detained anyone other than the one person we saw on the ground. And it, I'm not sure where he went. They put him in a hand, ha, into uh, zip ties, and he is now uh, no longer here. I don't know if they took him into an, one of the patrol cars because we got turned around. But there's another group over here that you can see with uh, bullhorns, a group of protesters that has not left. This is very different than what I saw on the other side of campus earlier this morning. Uh, they pushed a group very peacefully off of campus that just continued to chant and kind of move back and left uh, off of Charles E. Young Street. Everyone just got into their cars and left. This is another group that is staying. And you can hear many of them on their uh, bullhorns, clapping, chanting. Uh, a little further down, uh, Victor, if you can pan to your left, you can also see a line of officers down there. Uh, not sure what is directly in front of them. But the officers behind me here have cleared all those uh, lifts out of the road. And there, it looks like they're just really trying to kind of secure the area at this point. Yeah, we, we heard those bangs behind you. We saw that you even it startled you there on the ground. Um, are you seeing pepper spray or they anything like that? They were very like loud. I think, I mean, they yes. were immediately where we were. Yeah, we saw that. Um, and you can see how it would be very, very startling to anyone there on the ground. Um, it still looks peaceful. We are looking at another camera shot also on the right hand side where people are sitting. They're zip tied. Uh, it looks like no one's really pushing back, but a very different scene on the left hand side of your screen where Tina is right now. Uh, 
you talked to a couple of the people who are involved just now, basically expressing frustration, saying where were the where were the police when uh, people were coming in from the outside to the camp and the violence was happening earlier in the week, but now we're peacefully demonstrating and they're dispersing us. But of course, there was an order for an unlawful assembly uh, declared. They were given a deadline to leave and and did not leave. So now this is uh, what's happening there. But uh, it's definitely unfolding in a yeah. different way and right now, Cara. It is, and further down the street here, you can see one person in zip ties on his wrist there, uh, an officer speaking with him. I'm not sure where they are taking uh, the folks that are being detained here. That's the second person that we've seen uh, with a zip tie on. Everyone else seems to be standing back. Uh, they've moved closer to the building. Uh, and uh, the officers kind of just surrounding them, but it, it seems to have calmed down. I don't know what we walked up upon because as soon as we uh, arrived, pulled up, and got onto campus, we started hearing those very loud, you know, flashbangs, and we kind of rushed to this area and caught it in the midst of uh, kind of a scuffle, a little bit of an altercation, uh, and then we saw one person being taken to the ground, the zip ties put on. And now we can also see a second person being escorted away in a zip tie. But those are the only two that I personally have seen. Because, again, this morning for about two hours, we were on the opposite side of campus uh, where people were pushed back in a very peaceful, slow, methodical way. Uh, very different group. Yeah, and a, and a very different scene than what we saw earlier in the week when the violence actually did break out. Um, the Jewish Federation of Los Angeles actually put out a statement about what happened on Tuesday, saying, quote, the abhorrent actions of a few counter-protesters last night do not represent the Jewish community or our values called for open discussion uh, and, and, and peaceful protests. Um, so we should mention that as well, because mm -hmm. it does sound, as, as it becomes clearer, Sandy mentioned earlier, the fog of protest, but as it becomes clearer, it does look like an outside group came onto camp to disrupt uh, that camp, and that's when the violence broke out. Certainly. We should also say Cara's been saying she sees them being detained, only a couple of people, but can't see where they're going. On your right-hand side of the screen is where those protesters are being lined up. They're sitting um, right on the curb there waiting to get into the sheriff's buses. As we spoke with the CHP just a minute ago, says that more than 100 people have been detained. They will be processed and booked. On the left-hand side of your screen, we are watching um, the scene where Cara is, where we just heard multiple flashbangs and saw one person being detained and then on the right hand side of your screen is where they're taking the folks who are who are being detained and car you have spoken with several protesters this morning i remember you had a young guy earlier who recently graduated from the university and then you had the two gentlemen you just spoke to from all those protesters it seems they're very critical of the law enforcement response which everyone is kind of criticizing after the violence on tuesday night when law enforcement was not present um kind of recap what you've been hearing from these protesters you know, we've heard the full gamut. Um, I've heard from students who wanted wanted the, pro the police to be out here a stronger presence sooner. Uh, students who were concerned about taking midterms and studying and felt they couldn't get to, to where they needed to on campus. They were frightened. Uh, all the way through uh, pro-Palestinian uh, protesters who felt that they were being unfairly singled out after counter-protesters, uh, they said, stirred up violence on campus. So um, a lot of criticism. Uh, it probably is difficult to strike the right note <laughs> with everyone here. But uh, we have, and we've seen a, a, a variance of responses as well from police. Uh, again, from the very orderly, kind of quiet, uh, over an hour and a half, pushing back a crowd about 1,000 feet to uh, what we just saw behind us. So they're dealing with a lot of variables. If we flip our camera all the way around, here comes another group of officers in riot gear. Uh, you can see the zip ties that they're carrying. Unclear how many people, I know you said you could see them being kind of lined up in another part of campus, have actually been detained here on campus. We've been able to move around much more freely at this point now that they feel they have the campus somewhat secure. When we first arrived here right around 3 o'clock this morning, uh, media had a hard time getting onto this campus. They tried to completely, uh, you know, close off all of the exits and entrances onto campus, uh, I'm sure, so that they had a static situation. Uh, but we have been able to move around much more freely since then. And the crowd has diminished greatly. Uh, but there are these pockets of people who are remaining on campus. Uh, and this is where we see some of these uh, confrontations now occurring, like the one 
we just witnessed. Okay, Cara, we're going to keep watching your camera. I want to bring back in a journalism professor at USC, Sandy Tolan. Um, when you hear about the media being kept out of these protests, and I know there were similar complaints at, at USC, but also we know um, that at least two student journalists uh, earlier when this, these, this violence broke out at UCLA on the campus were hurt, uh, significantly hurt. There were about 25 people hurt, uh, according to the pro-Palestinian camp there. Um, what do you make of that? You're a journalism professor. What do you make of keeping the media out. I think it's a terrible idea. Uh, I mean, this is what you see in countries that impose martial law. I mean, the idea that the press should not witness what is going on, to me, in a free society, in a, at a university, uh, which is supposed to be fo fostering free speech, shutting out the media, shutting out KCAL, shutting out the LA Times, other, other stations, other newspapers, what, what is the concern? That people will witness what is happening? I mean, I don't know what else. I mean, if people want to restrict it to only the press, uh, I wouldn't in, be in favor of that, but I would understand that. But shutting out the press entirely, yesterday we had 400 faculty, or well, a couple hundred faculty at least, I would say, um, protesting the militarization of campus and the arrests and calling for the charges to be dropped. We had to march all the way to the gate at Jefferson, which was looked like there were, you know, it was closed, so there were bars, and people were talking. Professors were talking to the media through the locked gates because they could not come on. Mm -hmm. um, so the so and, and I also like to give a shout out to student journalists all across the country. Our Annenberg Media and the Daily Trojan have been doing remarkable reporting and talk about a learning environment. These these young journalists are doing work they'll never forget. Mm -hmm. And that it's really important to the community now, to all of Los Angeles, because the decisions, uh, which I think are very, very ill-advised decisions to shut out the free press. What What is going on here? They have been the eyes and ears on the ground. Uh, you, the UC system, uh, the, the policy is you bring in police and law enforcement as a last resort and maybe they saw the violence that broke out earlier uh, uh, in the week and they said we have no choice to keep our campus safe and our community safe we need to bring in law enforcement what would what would you make of that well uh, you know again fog of protest so th that caveat but what it appears happened and I hear the the statement from the Jewish Federation that there may be just some people who weren't representative but there was violence there was mob violence against the pro-Palestinian protesters who have been peaceful. Now, by many accounts, including professors, the police stood by while this was happening. I don't know, I don't recall if it was campus police or not, but they stood by and people in the pro-Palestinian camp said, you know, they needed help. So they, and they didn't get that help. And there were, there were, uh, so there was this mob violence. And then after that, the university calls in the LAPD and, and other uh, law enforcement officers. So it's almost as if that violence on Tuesday night was, is being rewarded by taking down the camp. Mm -hmm. And the camp uh, and, and the camp at, at USC, by all accounts, and I've been to the USC camp, you know, probably eight or ten hours, um, has been peaceful. So it's, it's almost like you want people to protest peacefully, and then the violence is, is, is put on them, and then the camp is broken down. I, 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 don't, I don't follow the logic mm. there. Are you worried about the students involved in this? Because UCLA has said that employees and students involved could face sanctions, even suspension in some cases. How do you feel about students who want to exercise their free speech, peacefully protest, but then are they putting their education and future at jeopardy? I mean, I, USC's administration is putting their education mm. and future at jeopardy. They are courageous people, and I'm, you know, again, I have not witnessed any of those people in the, all the hours I've said at the camp um, uh, speak in, in, a, in a way that is anti-Semitic. And again, the, there are many Jewish students who are part of these protests. They have a lot of risk they have because of the courage of their convictions they have risked and and think about this throughout history you know Gandhi Mandela King I'm not saying that these students are are the equivalent but people have spoken out spoken their convictions and risked arrest I have a colleague who is not tenured other professors were arrested they're not tenured they're risking a lot and I think 
if if USC and, and if other uh, institutions want to you know appropriately reach out an olive branch, um, it would be to drop all charges and promise that there will be no sanctions because at the very least that is something that administrators can do.